Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I have a couple things to cover today and the first one is oral contraceptives. In a perfect world women wouldn't take them. They cause weight gain, they increase the risk of heart disease and cancer, they have a detrimental effect on gastrointestinal bacteria. A new study has now shown that there's a connection between taking birth control pills and an increased risk for developing multiple sclerosis and clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS. Now, CIS you might not have heard about. It's a term for the first episode of neurologic symptoms that lasts at least 24 hours and is caused by inflammation and demyelination in the central nervous system. So people who have CIS may or may not go on to develop MS, but it's a warning sign that something is going on. Um, this study controlled for age, smoking status, and obesity, and it will be presented at a conference later this year. 305 women with MS or CIS, who were members of Kaiser, were matched each, matched with 10 controls. And in looking at the data, the researchers determined that women who took birth control pills had a 35% increased risk of developing MS and CIS. And this risk even continued for women who had, uh, was the same for women who had discontinued the use of birth control pills a month before the study began. The lead researcher noted that there are two other studies that have shown a similar assertion. Now, uh, MS and autoimmune diseases are much more common in women than men and hormones play a role, so it's not surprising that taking the pills, which contain hormones, would increase the risk. So just one more reason to discontinue taking these awful, you know, awful pills. There are better and safer forms of contraception, and other conditions for which the pills are routinely prescribed, like PMS and acne, can be resolved with diet and lifestyle changes. And I don't think that having some temporary comfort um, from PMS or um, temporary changes in the complexion of your skin and, and the quality of your complexion are worth the increased risks associated with taking these pills. So. People who are listening to this still on these pills, get off of them. They are not safe. All right, the other thing I want to talk about today is antibiotic resistance. And I'll start with, um, I recently covered Dr. Campbell's book, Whole, Rethinking the Science of Nutrition, in advanced study classes. And it was a good excuse to go back and read it again, because every time I read something that Dr. Campbell writes, I learn something new that I didn't see the last time I read it. So anyway, in the book, he discusses the fact that many people who are well-meaning and care about a lot of issues, their behavior is not really consistent with their ideology. And he cites an example of um, at the, observing at the state fair that people who are advocating for better environment are often eating conventionally grown animal foods at the fair. Now, the United Nations, most groups have stated that factory farming is a huge threat to the environment, so this behavior is obviously inconsistent with the belief uh, systems of these people, which is they want better environment. Now, to be fair about the whole situation, I don't think most of them think this through and realize that this is the case, but it does point out something interesting, and I guess I'm gonna throw the question to you. How consistent are you in aligning the things that you say uh, are important to you uh, and your behaviors? Many of us are interested in optimal health. We want to be lean. We're concerned with things like animal cruelty and the environment. We're worried about the increase in antibiotic resistant and um, uh, bacterial infections, etc. And if these are truly interests of yours, how does your behavior line up and your choices line up with those statements? Well, one area in which I've discovered that people can be a amazingly inconsistent is in the foods they consume away from home. We have members who are very diligent about only buying wild caught fish to eat at home and organic animal foods because they don't want to support the terrible way in which animals are treated on factory farms and they're worried about antibiotic steroids and hormones injected in these animals. But these same people will often eat conventionally grown animal foods and farmed fish in restaurants and at special events. They really don't stop to think about it but I want you to think about it right now. Every time you consume anything, you're supporting something. And in the case of conventionally grown animal foods, you're supporting cruelty to animals, what may be irreparable harm to the environment, and the increased risk of antibiotic resistant infections in people. Today, even the federal government agrees that the leading cause of antibiotic resistance is the antibiotics used in agriculture. According to the Centers for Disease Control, more animals are used, more antibiotics, I'm sorry, are used in, U, in the U.S. in farm animals than are used on humans. The CDC states in a 2013 report that this contributes to the growth of antibiotic resistant bacteria and that animals serve as carriers. The CDC explains in this report how it happens. Giving antibiotics to farm animals 
cells allows antibiotic resistant bacteria to thrive while susceptible bacteria are killed off. This bacteria is then transmitted to humans in the form of animal foods purchased in restaurants and, um, and grocery stores and every place else that humans obtain food. These bacteria can then cause infections in humans, particularly those who aren't healthy, and unfortunately, in the United States today, most humans aren't healthy, so this constitutes a large part of the population. As we all know, some of these infections can be life-threatening, and in fact, I have many friends, co-workers, students, members who have lost family members to antibiotic-resistant infections, and particularly in hospitals. Of course, the CDC is not bold enough to suggest that we just stop the prophylactic use of antibiotics in animals and instead calls on the FDA to make decisions about how antibiotics can be used in agriculture. This, of course, means that nothing will get done. We're always back to the same place we end up in all these discussions. It's up to each of us to change the situation by voting with our checkbooks. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but I'll tell you one thing I have observed is that humans experience difficulty and discomfort when their behavior is not consistent with their intentions, goals, and objectives. So, if your intention is to be kinder to animals and to the planet, to live a long and healthy life, and to stop engaging in behaviors that pose a risk to you and others, then you should not be eating conventionally raised animal foods. Not at home, not when dining out, not at your mother's house, not at the state fair, not ever, okay? So that's it for today and for the week. As always, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I will be back with you again next Tuesday.